Dead Rising is a game where the goal is to survive in a mall for 72 hours while surviving thousands of zombies at a time. Along the way, we will meet various survivors and even some psychopaths that we'll have to deal with all while dealing with an in-game timer that is slowly ticking down. In this video, we are going for the Platinum Trophy for Dead Rising. The journey for the Platinum will be a rough one as we'll have to be as fast as possible to save most survivors in the game while dealing with some very bad AI for them and even have to earn a trophy that will literally take 14 real hours to accomplish. This one sucked. With all that being said, this is one of my favorite games of all time, so let's get started. We are Frank West, a photojournalist. We've heard that there's something weird going on in the town of Willamette, Colorado. We take a helicopter to fly over the city, and after taking a couple of photos, we realize something really bad is happening. We ask our pilot to drop us off at the mall and to come back for us in three days. While in the mall, we notice a couple of survivors boarding up the front doors, and we find out that we are in fact dealing with zombies. Shocker. I love that the survivors just straight up say zombies, by the way. I feel like most movies or shows just kind of skirt around actually saying the word zombies. Eventually, a very strong old lady fights her way past grown men to open the front doors to rescue her dog, which results in the zombies to start pouring in and killing everyone. We fight our way past some zombies and we take a few pictures, which gives us our first two trophies. One for taking a photo of 50 zombies in one photo. Fantastic. Group photo, hey, our first trophy. And another for taking photos of 10 survivors total. We escape the zombies and make it into the security office, which will be our safe space for the rest of the game. Here we can save our game and bring survivors back to save them. In the security room, we meet Brad and Jesse for the first time, who are undercover agents investigating the outbreak. After getting our bearings in the security room, we meet Otis, a security guard who gives us a radio that he will use to call us about survivors in the area. This radio will become very important for a very missable trophy in a different playthrough. For this playthrough though, I had no plan going in. I just wanted to play the game normally and try to save as many people as I can. There is a trophy for saving at least 50 survivors and I didn't think I'd be able to get it my first playthrough but hey if I did even better once outside we meet our first two survivors we can save once we reunite them on this roof we snap a photo and get two really easy trophies out of the way boom photojournalists another trophy right there that's for getting at least 1500 pp from a single photo and the artiste score at least 3000 pp from a single photo Thanks, Natalie and Jeff. Thank you, guys. Now, let's get you guys safe. Come with me. On our way out to the mall, we come across an injured Jesse, who says Brad is dealing with an active shooter at the food court. We tell Jesse to stay put and that we will go for her to help Brad. She then has the audacity to ask if we even know how to fight. Of course we know how to fight. Kinda. I've covered wars, you know. On our way to help Brad, we get another trophy. Oh, we got a trophy. Free fall. That's from drop from a high at least 16 feet. <laughs> Once in the food court, we help Brad take out the active shooter by slicing him up with a katana. Ugh, slice him! Die, Carlito! Yes! <laughs> When the fight is over, we follow Brad to the entrance plaza to help him find this old man that he is looking for. The old man refuses to come back with us to the security room, and we are on our own for a bit. It was now time to start saving some survivors. This is where the real nightmare begins. After clearing the way for one of them with some umbrellas... Come on, Bill! Clearing out a way! Let's go! Umbrella powers... too strong. Oh, raining zombies. Just got a trophy. Oh, so raining zombies was knock at least 30 zombies aside with a parasol. I eventually find myself with four survivors. Luckily, this group went pretty smoothly and we get them all saved. We had a lot of time to kill at this point, so it was time to start working on more trophies. My first plan of action was to go outside and fight the convicts. These three guys drive around and constantly shoot you and try to run you over. So I decided I was going to go GTA on their ass and steal their ride and machine gun. 
You're done! <laughs> Let me steal that for a trophy. Carjacker, thank you very much. With machine gun in hand, it was time to fight our first psycho of the game. Now, while I'm going through this playthrough, I'm gonna try and fight all the psychopaths I can so that I could get a trophy for photographing 10 of them. This is Adam. He is a clown. I don't like clowns. So I kill Adam. Is he really blocking my bullets right now? This guy's a psycho, dude. Oh, he just jumped off the... He just jumped off the railing. <laughs> Adam, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing, Adam? Come up here, weirdo. Come over here, Adam. Oh, there you go. Nice little spin move, man. Really cool. And you're dead. <laughs> Dope defense. That's for killing our first psycho. Now, Adam is a very important fight no matter what you're trying to do on your playthrough because he drops the best weapon in the game, the mini chainsaws, which I will pretty much exclusively use for all of my playthroughs. Also, after you defeat him, you can save Greg, who shows you a very important shortcut that is essential for all playthroughs. Eventually, in a fight with Carlito... Oh my god! Shoot him, Brad! Brad, don't run into the hockey store. Shoot the bad guy, Brad. Brad, you have a clear shot. Just shoot him in the head. Right there, Brad. <laughs> Brad, okay. Brad gets shot, and we need to get him some medicine. So we make our way over to the supermarket to find some for him. Here we meet Steven, who is a very mad store manager. We snap a photo of Steven for a trophy for photographing four psychopaths. Steven, oh, nice psycho photo. And then proceed to murder him in cold blood. Oh, poor Steven. Poor, poor Steven. <laughs> we get the medicine for Brad and spend some more time exploring the mall, fighting more psychos, and even saving more survivors. At this point, I had somehow only missed one survivor. So I was starting to think, hey, maybe I could actually save 50 of them. But I still had a long way to go. During this time, I even got a trophy for killing 1,000 zombies. Wow, look at us. Who would have thought, huh? Eventually, we get a call about a cop tying up some girls. We go investigate and put an end to this weird, creepy cop lady. Goodbye, Joe. Peacekeeper. What's that? Defeat at least five psychopaths. And somehow managed to even save all the survivors she held captive. At this point, I decided to go for the trophy for saving 50 people, which meant I really had to time crunch in order to be able to do that. There were so many close calls I had where I thought for sure someone was going to die on me while escorting them because the AI in this game is just so dumb. It seems like the survivors just love to be eaten by zombies because they will go out of their way to always run into a group of them. Oh no! No! Rich! Oh my god, Barbara! What are you doing? Go! Lady! Let's go, Barbara! Holy crap, man! Barbara! Oh my god! Barbara, let's go! Come on! Let's go, Barbara! I eventually came across Sean, who is a cult leader psychopath. I murdered him easily with my chainsaws. Your soul is mine, Sean! What kind of name is Sean for a cult leader? And got the trophy for photographing 10 psychopaths, which means I was done with the psychopaths. He also happened to have a ton of survivors tied up, so I managed to save all of them. Come on, guys. You can do it. Get- oh my god, what are you guys doing? Get up on the thing. Get on there. Ray, please. Ray? Alright. Everyone, out of my way. Out of my way. 
Oh my goodness. It's like pulling teeth. With all of these survivors now saved, I went around the safe house and started to take pictures of everyone for a trophy. There we go. Census taker. So that's for photographing at least 50 survivors. Okay. So because I wanted to make sure I got the Saint trophy, which is saving 50 survivors, I decided to go for the B ending, which meant I stopped doing all the main missions on purpose at this point and essentially failed the main story. This would ensure that I definitely had at least 50 survivors and got the trophy no matter what. In hindsight, I probably saved enough people to go for the true ending, but I didn't want to risk it. So we fail the main story and I kill Kent for a trophy. All right, so we failed the main story, and Kent is in the floor. <laughs> That's actually good. We needed to do that. We're going for the B ending, so. Tree vanishes in the darkness. All good. All good in the hood. Now let's kill Kent. Goodbye, Kent. And we got Punisher, which is defeat at least 10 psychopaths. Now I basically just had to wait for 72 hours to pass in the game for the helicopter to show up, which meant I had a ton of time to spare. So I decided to knock out some miscellaneous trophies. The first thing I did was put a bunch of masks on some zombies. Boom bada bing! <laughs> Costume party. I then decided to practice my bowling for a bit. All right, here's another dumb little trophy. Gotta take this bowling ball and hit 10 zombies with it in one throw. Okay, absolutely nailed it. Yep. Seriously, there are enough zombies. You know what, I got an idea. I got an idea. We'll go outside. Actually, it might be easier to hit all these zombies by the door over here for 10. Here we go. Yeah. yeah! Yeah, Frank, you know what's up. Strike! Right on! Then I was feeling pretty reckless, so I decided to jump a car and a motorcycle for two separate trophies. Boom! Stunt driver! <laughs> really simple. That didn't even seem like 33 feet, but there it is. Easy. Okay, so we need to do the same thing, but with the motorcycle now. Jump 33 feet. Luckily, there's a ramp right there. There we go. Oh, stunt rider. <laughs> that was so lame. That was the lamest jump in the history of stunt jumps. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I still had a ton of time to spare, so I spent 10 minutes smashing these barrels here over and over until I broke a hundred objects in the game. Yes! Item smasher! God. That took... I, did have, I was just smashing barrels for like 10 minutes. And with that all done, that was all I can do. So I just wait at the helipad and finish my first playthrough. All right, we got the Saint Trophy. Get at least 50 survivors out of the mall. Yes. I'm so happy about that one. Man, that's good. Lifesaver Trophy. Get at least 20 survivors out of the mall. Humanist is getting 10 survivors out of the mall. And that's it. We got uh, ending B, Saint Trophy. Can't believe we actually did it. That's awesome. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. With the first playthrough done, the second playthrough is gonna be all about finishing up the miscellaneous trophies, as well as focusing on two big trophies. One of those was Frank the Pimp, which is to escort eight female survivors at one time which will also give us another trophy for just having eight survivors at one time. This one is tricky because only eight survivors can be on the map at one time, which meant I had to kill every survivor that showed up that didn't help towards the trophy. Luckily, this was no big deal since we already got the Saint trophy. I didn't really need to care about survivors too much anymore. 
The second big trophy we're going for was the Zombie Genocider Trophy, which means I need to kill 53,594 zombies in one run. The total population of Willamette. This was going to be a slog, but with my plan set, I started my second playthrough. My first plan of action was to start changing into 20 different costumes in the game. All right. <clears throat> we got Sharp Dresser. I then had run around so much doing all of that that I unlocked the Marathon Runner Trophy. Oh, we just unlocked Marathon Runner. We covered a distance of 26.2 miles. Hey. Once that was done, I then changed into all the costumes in the game. Okay, we got Clothes Horse. Changed into all costumes available in the mall. And as I was playing, every time I found a gun or a machine gun, I picked it up and just fired it until eventually I fired 1,000 total bullets. Uzi, shoot all the bullets. Bullet points, there we go. We fired at least 1,000 bullets. I then had some time to kill after working on all of these trophies before it was time to finally get Frank the Pimp. So I started working on killing 53,000 zombies. The best way to get this trophy is to drive underground and just run zombies over until you kill 53,000. It's a total grind, but it's definitely the best way to do it. I got to 10,000 kills before it was time for Frank the Pimp. All right, we should be coming up on the 10,000 zombies killed any second now. Any second now. Boom. Zombie killer. All right. That's 10,000 zombies. Now, for Frank the Pimp, I first needed to save these two girls in Paradise Plaza. I then had to take them to Wonderland Plaza via the shortcut that we get by killing Adam the Clown. Remember that one? Pamela and Heather. The first two pieces we need. Get in there, girls. Get in there. Get in the bathroom. Once we get here, we actually see two people hanging from this pink bear. Unfortunately, Nick is not a female, so he has to die. Unfortunately, Nick needs to die since he's not a female. Goodbye, Nick. Sorry. Let's go, Sally! All right, we got three females. Now, with three females in our group, it was time to fight Joe again and save the four women she has tied up. With seven females in my group, we slowly make our way back to the shortcut to Paradise Plaza. Ladies, please. Oh, no. Come on, everyone. Let's go down the stairs. Down the stairs. Come on down. Come on, ladies. All right, everyone go in there. Make sure I got seven of them. Are they going to even be able to get in here? Come on. Get in the door. Okay, there's one. Two, three. If you ladies would just get into the bathroom. Come on, Sally. There we are. There we are. Let's make let's do a head count. One, two. Oh my god, lady, stop fighting. Four, seven. Perfect. And rescue the final girl who's being held captive by Sean and his cultists. Once she's saved, we unlock both trophies. Perfect. Help her out. Jennifer, join up. There we go. We got tour guide for eight total survivors. And Frank the Pimp for having eight female survivors in our party party at one time. Nice. That's a kind of like a challenging one, but we did it. Now these girls can die for all I care. <laughs> okay, we're actually going to save all eight of these ladies here. Maybe this will push me a level 50. Let's see. Oh no, they're doing the thing where they they run at each other. Jennifer's just lost. She's just lost. Get, get, get on the thing. 
Okay, there's one. Okay. Come on. Get up there. Another one. Lily. Nice. Now all I gotta do is just get past everyone. Oh, perfect. And here we go. And there we are. Level max. Level 50. For saving all eight of those ladies. Good job, Frank. Good job. What a hero. Now it was time for Zombie Genocider. I did this same exact route that you're seeing on the screen for no joke over three hours. I watched an entire movie on Netflix while mindlessly doing this until I killed 53,000 zombies. The funniest thing is, is that this isn't even the most mind numbing trophy of the game. We'll get to that one later. Oh my God, I'm so close to being done. I'm so close to being done. 53,000. We're right there. I've been doing this for like two and a half hours. Two and a half hours of my life. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> what am I doing, man? Almost there. Almost there. So close. Almost there. Yes. Zombie Genocider. Oh, and my car broke down. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> The greed. Run! There it is. Zombie Genocider. You defeat at least 53,594 zombies. The whole population of Willamette. Oh my gosh, that took me so long. I watched the whole movie on Netflix while I was doing that. Oh, man. But it's done. Oh, it's done. It's finally done. <laughs> Thank God. With that done, I now basically had three miscellaneous trophies I can do left, and my second playthrough would be done. I took a picture of all the PP stickers in the mall, ate all types of food in the game, and then I had to kill a thousand zombies barehanded, which basically meant doing the spin move over and over again until I killed a thousand zombies. It was as fun as it sounds. It was now time for my last playthrough. This playthrough was mainly focused on completing the story with the true ending in order to unlock overtime mode. While I was playing through the story, I had to make sure not to get captured by the cultists or the special forces that show up later in the game, or else I'd miss out on a trophy and have to do a whole new playthrough. The other big trophy I was going for in this run was the Transmissionary Trophy. Otis, the security guard, will occasionally call you about missions or survivors on the map. For the trophy, you need to make sure you answer all 39 calls, but it's trickier than it sounds. For one, you need to rescue certain survivors as they have Otis calls associated with them, which only happens if those certain survivors are in the security room with at least three other survivors in it with them. Which basically translates to, I needed to save specific survivors and extra ones to ensure I got these calls. Which meant dealing with more dumb survivor AI. Great. Get in there, ladies. Oh my god, these survivors are so dumb. Get in there. Dude, getting these survivors up on the... Platform is a nightmare. One at a time. Oh my gosh. Also, you can completely miss calls if you aren't in certain areas at the time at which they occur, which really sucks. On top of all of that, Otis really loves to call you at the worst times, I swear. Oh my god, Otis is calling me. I'm trying to keep the survivors alive. 
To be honest, I just followed a guy for this one to make sure I didn't screw it up, and eventually I got it. All right, transmissionary is unlocked. We answered all of Otis's phone calls. That's a very missable trophy. I'm glad that one's over with. Now, as you're going through the story, Brad unfortunately turns into a zombie, and you need to make sure to take a picture of him. Rip Brad, guys. This, this trophy always bums me out. Look at him. I'm sorry, Brad. Snuffy shot, or snuff shot B. That's for taking a photo of zombie Brad. Now to put him out of his misery. Zombie, you're getting in the way of my heartfelt moment. Goodbye, Brad. Goodbye, Brad. Oh my god. Oh man, it's sad. Super sad. As well as Jesse, who also unfortunately turns into a zombie. Rest in peace, friends. You know the drill. <clears throat> Gotta put her out of her misery. Goodbye, Jesse. Like I said, as the story progresses, eventually the special forces show up and we have two miscellaneous trophies we can knock out with them. One of which is killing 10 of these guys, which is pretty simple stuff, especially with the mini chainsaw. The other is shooting down a helicopter. Here was me trying to shoot down a helicopter with a sniper rifle, thinking I had to hit the pilot in the head, but no. I'm dumb. All I had to do was just hit the actual helicopter until it explodes. It's just so hard to aim in this game. It's just crazy. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Sensitivity is wild. No! Oh my goodness! I actually cannot see. These darn trees, man. No, Frank! Oh my god. Oh my god, Frank! Frank, quit. He, he, he does this roll thing. I'm not even trying to do that. Ah! Oh. Dude, this is, <laughs> this is... Okay, 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 okay. We're fine. We're fine. But of course, I didn't realize this and resorted to just spamming my Mega Buster, which I got for killing 53,000 zombies. Super worth it. Helicopter. Yes! Helicopter! Oh my goodness! Thank God! Another very weird trophy I had to do was Perfect Gunner, which is firing a machine gun you get from a Special Forces guy without missing a single shot. This is actually pretty tricky because these come with 150 bullets in them, and it's really easy to miss a shot. Luckily, there was a way to cheese it. Hopefully this works. Please. Please. Yes. Perfect gunner. And that's for not missing with the machine gun. <laughs> so for some reason, you could do it on this piece of meat. This one seems to work best right here, right across from the door. But if the meat doesn't work, then you have to literally go to every single zombie and just methodically go boop, 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 150 shots. So thankfully, this meat trick works here. Oh my gosh, that would have sucked. With those trophies out of the way, it was time to wait the helipad and to unlock overtime mode. Overtime mode is essentially the true ending of the game. It turns out Frank is infected, so you work with Isabella to create a shot that can suppress the zombification for now. After collecting a ton of items for her, she creates the shot, and Frank discovers a hole in the clock tower that can potentially be a way out of the mall. Isabella and Frank use the concoction she makes as a repellent for the zombies and slowly make their way through this giant tunnel infested with zombies. 
right when we think we're in the clear and driving away, we are attacked by a tank and have a really silly battle with it until it breaks down and the leader of the special forces gets out and challenges Frank. Now it's time for the final boss of the game. You have no weapons and must rely on your fists to beat this dude's ass once and for all. Luckily, I just spent a lot of time killing zombies with my spin move. Not too much earlier, so I was pretty confident going into this. All right, it's time to fight. Oh, oh, oh God. Get back up, get back up. Spin to win. Oh God, he's choking me. Get off of me, you psycho. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, knock him down. Get him, zombies. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get up, get up, get up. I got to spin the win here, guys. I have to spin the win here. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. No, 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 not like this. I just floated on top of the tank. I'm not dealing with that. Frank, now is not the time to do the... Frank, now is not the time to do the dodge thing. Yeah! You're done! Ugh. Unbreakable. So we got the true ending and we never got captured once by the psychos or the military. And infinity mode, we beat the real ending. So we still need to get five day survivor and seven day survivor, which is going to be an absolute nightmare. And I think other than that, indoorsman and outdoorsman. So spend 24 hours indoors and outdoors. And then we're done. So we can combine all four of these into one playthrough. This seven day survivor is the, is the one trophy that I'm not looking forward to. Uh, but we'll get it done. 1.1% <laughs> of players have earned this. Man. These last four trophies were going to be the most painful trophies of the whole Platinum. Not because they are hard, they are just so boring. We needed to survive for seven days in infinite mode. Infinite mode is a sandbox mode where Frank's health is slowly decreasing over time. So you constantly have to scavenge a limited supply of food in the mall and fight survivors or psychopaths that spawn for more food. The reason why this sucks is because one in-game day equates to two real life hours, which means this trophy takes 14 real life hours to complete. What makes it even worse is there's no saving your game or anything. So if your game crashes 10 hours in or your console turns off, that's just 10 hours wasted. I honestly want to know who thought this was a great idea for a trophy or achievement because I'm going to write them a very stern letter. Basically, the strat is to gather all the health books in the game so that each food item heals you for more HP. And then you just stand around until your food supply is gone and then go find more food to just stand around again. You do this for 14 hours. I watched like three movies doing this. I read some books. I even spent an ungodly amount of time on my phone. This was so boring. While I was doing this, I made sure to spend 24 of those hours outside for outdoorsmen and 24 hours inside for indoorsmen. At about 10 hours in, you unlock five day survivor And finally, after waiting around for 14 hours, I was reaching the final moments of this mode. Ugh. You know, it's moments like these where I just really question, why do I do the things that I do? <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Only five minutes left, but not in real life, just game time. You can see it slowly. Just got to cross over into midnight and then we're done. Oh, this is going to feel so good. This is going to feel so good. Come on. Come on. Yes. 
Seven day survivor. Platinum trophy. Collected all the Dead Rising trophies. Holy crap, man. Oh my god. It's finally over. 14 plus hours. There we have it, guys. The Platinum Trophy for one of my favorite games of all time, Dead Rising. This Platinum will test your patience. Not only with the dumb Survivor AI, but especially with the 14-hour trophy and killing 53,000 zombies. My God. Either way, though, I still had a lot of fun doing this. I know it sounds crazy, but I did. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy this type of video, make sure to subscribe for more and check out this video right here.